In this video I'll be taking a look at the wiring harness for the Triumph restoration project we're doing and through this rebuild I'm going to give you all the knowledge necessary to be confidently able to tackle any electrical wiring project you may have. Since this bike came to me in pieces I don't know if there were any electrical issues present. We'll keep that in mind when looking it all through. First I'm going to take you through the complete rebuild of the harness. The first very important thing to know is the level of complexity for your harness. And here comes my first recommendation. Get the wiring diagram for your bike. These can be obtained from various sources. Check the video description for more. The wiring diagram will tell you everything you need to know about your harness and it will greatly ease troubleshooting any issues that you may have. When you're doing a complete overhaul, you're gonna be removing the entire harness from the bike. It's very important that as you're taking off the connectors and cables, you're labeling everything, all the connectors, all the wires, and you're taking a lot of notes and pictures, maybe even record the process to make it a lot easier for you when it comes time to assemble everything again. So you've got the entire harness on your workbench. If you're starting out, I would recommend you work in sections when removing the tape holding the harness together, or if you remove it all, put in some placeholders where wires branch out so you'll be, you'll be able to keep the original shape when you're putting it all back together. I really hate electrical tape for this kind of application. Over time it gets very gooey and sticky and disgusting. It's horrible to work with. So I would recommend you avoid electrical tape on any of your automotive, motorcycle, boating, whatever, wiring or electrical jobs. The only thing I feel like this is good for in this scenario is that you can take a quick piece and use it as a placeholder here where this branches out so you will know this is where it needs to be. Due to the excess amount of electrical tape used, there's a great amount of excess glue residue just everywhere on the harness. So I'm going to use some isopropyl alcohol on a piece of rag and I'm going to go over cleaned up a bit. Now that we've got the wires cleaned, it's time to take a look at the connectors. A lot of the connectors are filled up with this dielectric grease. At least I'm assuming it's that, or at least hoping. In my opinion, it's not exactly the right thing to do for these type of small connectors. You should use those instead for battery leads or any other place where there's a lot of power going through. In an application like this, where there's also so much grease used, dust particles and just dirt can get trapped in the grease and from the vibrations it can actually act as an abrasive and ruin the plating on the connectors leading to premature failure. So I'm going to be cleaning up all the connectors using a toothbrush, a piece of cloth and some brake cleaner. 
We need to look for any sort of damage on the connectors, any corrosion, oxidization, or any damage to the wiring, the crimping, where wire is showing, I mean bare wire, and we need to mark these out. So after we've cleaned everything, we can get back to those problems and fix them. During the cleaning process, I found a few connectors that need further attention. This one I actually stopped cleaning so I can show you guys. This one is very oxid oxidized. I'm going to zoom in here so you can see. There's a thin layer of green oxidization on here. And this is a very typical uh, scenario where the outer housing is not damaged. So most likely I can just clean this just as I did with everything else and this will be good as new. So looking into the connector from the back side, it's actually perfectly fine. It was only a surface oxidization on the pins themselves from the front and also we have now clean. I'm gonna just blow it out from this direction as well. So this connector can be assembled back again. In some cases, you're not gonna be lucky enough that a cleaning will fix your problem. For example, with these connectors, you have to replace the crimp itself because the ins insulation on the wire had broken off and that means that wire is exposed and probably have been oxidizing and it's going to eventually also break off. I think if I had wiggled this enough, it will also just break off. So. This is one of the simplest connectors of course to replace and we can just take a new piece of uh, crimp, cut it off here, take out the old crimp from the housing, press this back onto the wire, housing back on and we are good to go. The next thing to do is look over the complete wiring also examining them for any damaged insulation or any other damages we might find. One of the things that I have come across with is this here. The wire is very brittle and the insulation actually cracked completely. So how do we go about fixing this problem? Well, we have two options. We can either cut out this short section or replace the wire from end to end. The latter would be the best solution, but in that case I'm, I would have to source the connector and I would also need to look through all the rest of the harness and figure out where does this end, which we're actually going to do just to be sure that the best solution is only replacing this short section here. Maybe even go a little bit further back where the, the cable is not too brittle yet, because here I can definitely feel that it's been very hot and the insulation had been damaged which makes it more likely that it will break again so we need to actually redo it from a little bit further up here. Now that we've decided to only replace this short section of the wire how do we go about it? Well when replacing wires you need to know the size, gauge or cross section area and decide the method to use. It's also important to know what kind of wire to use. Stay away from any household wiring in your vehicles. It's not meant for this kind of application. And get the right automotive grade materials. More on this in the description below. For the method of replacement, we can either use soldering, cut the wire here, solder in a new section, or use a slicer to put in the replacement wire. I personally prefer sol the soldering method, but others argue that using a crimped connection is better. I'll let you do your research and make up your own mind about it. Always remember to put a heat shrink tube 
to insulate your repairs. Preferably get the ones with the glue so they will be perfectly watertight. This also takes care of some mechanical stress that's um, coming from the solar joint. So this will be a long-term repair and fix for this problem. I realized that since this is just a connector back into itself, it doesn't matter if I replace it with something else. I have some of these watertight connectors. This is a two pin, but since it's a two wire solution already, it doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna make a jumper from one end of this and put the other end on here. Now that we've got this fixed and out of the way, I'm gonna look through the harness one more time and see if I can find any other issues that need to be addressed. Another important part is checking all your grounding points. For example, this one. This eyelet is for grounding the ECU to everything else. It's not in the best of shape, so we will be replacing that, but I will do that when, we, when it comes to installing the ECU. I've cleaned all the other points as well. They're looking uh, perfectly fine, and they're also quite uh, beefy, so I don't see any reason to replace them. Let's move on to one of the last steps of our harness rebuild, which is covering your harness back up. It's important to choose the right materials. Once again, avoid electrical tape. There are a few options here, but I would recommend you go with a PET harness cloth tape. This will provide great abrasion resistance, high temperature resistance, it's flame retardant and flexible. Everything you need for your harness. Tesa makes a good one, but they're available from other brands' products as well, just like this Certoplast one. There is also the more commonly known PET fleece tape. And although they are similar, this is more intended for use inside the passenger compartment of a car. And to be honest, they don't have all the properties we're looking for. Alternatively, in some cases, you can use these braided wire sleeves. They can be quite high heat resistant and also look pretty cool. But I don't have a lot of them, so I'll be skipping these. You can also use some larger heat shrink tubing. In some cases it can make sense. For me, I'm gonna go with the PET cloth tape. And for some of the smaller branches, where it's only a few wires branching off, I'll be using this, which is a split tubed uh, wiring loom cover. So let's get to it, shall we? You can start the tape at an angle and ensure that you have a small amount of overlap each time you're coursing. Always pull the tape tight, but not too tight. Just make sure that the tape is not slagging. If I were to start a harness from zero, I would also be twisting the bundle, ensuring that they are more flexible. But since these have not been twisted and there's a lot of different orientations of the wire, I'm just going to leave it as it is.
Would you have done something differently or have some questions? Make sure to leave them in the comments below.